We're gonna install the GT8 back there, and this boat has some water sitting in the hole. To get my sand paper to work back there, we need a perfectly dry environment. Uh, you can never really get all the water out of the boat, but what you can do is drop the tongue all the way down, and that'll pull the water up to the front of the boat. So the GT8 is the in-hole transducer. That's what we use to read bottom while we're on pad and provides our, our 2D or traditional sonar at the console. It's really important to have it dry when you're using a sandpaper disc because the, the disc itself will deteriorate with water. As far as the curing process, it's not as important, but actually sanding down the glass is important. I'm moving the pumps out of the way so I can get my drill and my sanding disc down to the floor of the boat. It's important to remember where the pumps go so that you don't mount your GT8 in-hole transducer where the uh, bilge pump needs to be to pull the water out of the bottom of the boat. I've got my GT8, each Garmin GT8 uh, box comes with a, the transducer itself and a foam dam. Now this is what uh, will stick down on the bottom of the boat and uh, fill our epoxy in that and then the GT8 will slip into this dam. Uh, before I start sanding, I always take my dam and put it down where I think it ought to go so I can get a mental image of what needs to be sanded and, uh, and kind of where that's gonna fit in between the pumps and the transducer, making sure that everything can go back in the way it was designed by Ranger and that uh, it's not gonna interfere with the remote drain plug or any other pump. The best placement for the GT8 is farthest back on the pad where the, where the hole is in the water all the time. For us on a Ranger, that's as close to the drain plug as we can get on a flat surface that's uh, uninterrupted. So when you get up on pad, you can uh, still read bottom at high speeds. So now I'm gonna start sanding. We're gonna try to create a nice flat level surface so that our epoxy will stay nice and level for us while it's setting up. We wanna take all this paint and glue off until we get down to clean pink fiberglass. You wanna take a good amount of glass off, but not too much because we are working right on the bottom of the hole here. So as you can see here, we've sanded off a hole the size of our dam. We've got down to the red fiberglass, and that's uh, looking like a good surface to mount our GT8. To glue our in-hole transducer down, we're just using a quick setting five minute hard epoxy, and that'll hold that transducer to the hole, make sure no air is getting in between the transducer and the hole, and it's not gonna shake loose over time. We've sanded our hole for our GT8 dam. Now it's important to go in there with isopropyl alcohol and a rag and clean up the surface. This ensures, one, that the dam, which has adhesive on the back, will stick to the hole and that the epoxy will get a good bite on the hole itself to make it one physical unit. We just got done wiping our surface down with isopropyl. We use isopropyl alcohol because it dries very quickly and it, and it cleans well. So now it's clean, ready for the dam. We will remove your adhesive sticker and line that up. So we got our dam stuck to the floor. Now we want to lightly sand the surface of the transducer. I just use my disc pad and just gently scrape the bottom of the deucer to make a rough surface so that the epoxy can also bite onto the surface of the transducer. Our next step before we glue it in, which you don't want to try to do after you glue it, is route your transducer cable out of the bottom of the hole. Grab my transducer wire and set it out here for pulling. Okay, I'll start with my epoxy, some type of pouring device. I'm, I'm using the one that comes with it. Some guys just use a little plastic cup. We'll mix it up here till it starts getting a little warm. Then I'll take this down and dump it directly into the dam and make sure it all gets in there. Once it's leveled out, I'll take my transducer and I'll push it into the dam and turn it 90 degrees. Spinning at 90 degrees will smear that epoxy and make sure that no air bubbles are still residing inside that epoxy as it hardens.